everybody, it's Erin from Me Papery. Welcome back to the channel. Today is week two in the January Junk Journal Jam 2024. And today I am making some paper. So uh, if you're curious about this collaboration, this is a collaboration between several channels. That is Denise Cothern, Us E Papery, Above All Journal, Vets and Pieces Studio, Millennial Scribbles, and The Crafty Cottage. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, that's hashtag January Junk Journal Jam 2024, hashtag JJJJ 2024, hashtag Junk Journal, hashtag Paper Crafts. That'll be on all the social media. So, week two, paper. What am I doing? I got some cool tissue paper in um, in some in a Christmas gift that I would like to have a play with. So I've got my messy mat out because we're playing messy today. And I've got a couple of different substrates that I want to work with. Um, one is I've got some mixed media paper that we're gonna put some book page down on and then we're gonna put the, book, the tissue paper over that. Um, two, whoop, I've got some um, green hanging file folder. So we've got the green side, we've got the brown side. Three, I've got some paper that I've, uh, you know, watercolored and then I was just kind of like putsy doodling on it. I'm not super attached to these doodles, um, you know, so if they get obscured by tissue paper and, and stuff, I think that might be kind of cool. So let's have a play and see what what happens. So because this one is going to be a uh, multiple step process in terms of this uh, book pages and that, what I'm gonna do is start with this one. So we'll get the book pages down on the, on the mixed media paper. So I'm just gonna free a few book pages from their, from the book here. Actually, you know what would be cool is let's get some different book pages from different books. One sec. Let's grab some of these. Let's grab one of those. And we've got some sheet music that's been kind of torn up anyway. So, all right. So basically what we're going to start with is a master board. And if you don't know what a master board is, basically you're taking a, a base of some sort. Oh, sorry, sorry. You're taking a base of some sort and you're collaging papers on it with the end goal that you're gonna end up cutting this up to use for for cards and, and tags and stuff. That's all it is. Um, I see questions a lot in the Facebook group. What's a master board? It's really simple, that's all it is. Um, so I'm just gonna take my paper, my book pages. Ooh, I've even got a picture on one. Fun, 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 fun. All right, and I'm gonna separate these out a bit so I've got some different pages to work with. I'm gonna grab my tearing ruler just because I'm weird that way and I like um, and I like tearing with the tearing ruler. But you can tear without a tearing ruler, or you can tear with a regular ruler, or you can cut with fancy scissors, or you can tear it against the edge of the table. Really, you just need to make big pieces of paper into smaller pieces of paper in whichever manner you like. So um, what I did with the music paper was just take take the big thick margins off of it so that what we're left with is, is the music. So let's start with this paper. And what I'm going to do, I've got some I've got some liquid matte medium. This is from Liquitex. Treats a matte finish, extends color, blah, 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 fluid medium. Reduces gloss, extends color, lowers viscosity, increases transparency. This is non-yellowing. It's water resistant when dry. Um, for acrylic colors and mediums only, you can thin this with up to 25% water or with airbrush medium. Add gloss medium for a satin finish compatible with all Liquitex products. This is good for creating a matte finish blending and as a collage adhesive. So that's how we're gonna use it today is as a collage adhesive. So 
I need to find a brush. There we go. Um, and you don't need to have like a super awesome expensive brush, but you do want to make sure that what you've got is a brush that is going to lay the medium down smoothly and that isn't going to lose all its bristles all over your, all over your pretty paper. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get some pieces torn up here just to get us started of this main book page color. And let's tear these up. There we go. Whatever I don't use on this one, I'll use on another master card. Maybe I'll do a second one off camera. Because having some master boards made is not a bad thing. I could use some, some tag bases and stuff, so. All right, so let's get this going. Um, yeah, this is a brand new bottle. So I'm going to open this quick. And I'm gonna be just double make care here and I'm just gonna gloop some of this matte medium down. And brush it. We've got some open working time on this, so I can be a little a little crazy and have some fun with this without worrying about it too much. But what I'm gonna do is kind of get myself a spot where the stuff is pretty well situated, nice and flat and even. Get it spread around the page really well. Yeah, there we go, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. All right, and I'm gonna start sticking Sticking stuff down. If you run into a dry spot, just put some more medium on there. It really is that simple. And what's nice about this, because you do have some open time, you can slide it around a little bit. Um, where did I see that illustration? Is that on here somewhere? Did I get it already? That would be fun. Let's stick that kind of right there. And what I like to do with master boards is get the edges. Um, of course, this is a very brittle book page, but I like to get the edges first. Um, go and then you know stuff goes in the center and it works out really nice that way so it's just a little easier when you're trying to collage from end to end on something it's like you know making wall-to-wall -wall carpeting all right let's get some get some music page down there some of this stuff. Doesn't matter which way the text goes. Um, at least for me, it doesn't. If it does for you, then by all means, you know, make sure you've got pieces of text going the right way and, you know, whatever you, whatever you need to do to make yourself feel like you've done, done the right job. Um, just put some more matte medium on top of pieces because you're going to start kind of layering and overlapping there we go. So you can work very, very quickly. And that's actually, it's better if you do because um, you don't want to overthink this. Because it's going to get end up getting cut, cut into pieces anyway. And it's going to end up, this is background. This ends up being background. 
And this is really going to end up being background because this is going to get covered up. Um, this is going to get covered up by, by uh, a whole nother layer. So, you know, don't overthink it. All I'm doing here is just making sure I've got color spread around um, the way that I want it. Grab some more medium when you need it. I'm gonna make sure that gets tucked under there a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's start getting some pieces down here. Some might bubble up a little bit. You can just use your brush to kind of re-tamp those down. some more of this one in here. The matte medium is getting a little bit dry, so I'm just putting some more on there. This particular book page has just such a lovely gothic font on it. So I wanna, we're gonna, we're gonna use it. Put some more over here. Okay, so we've got the whole paper covered. I am going to set this aside and let it dry for a bit while we work on um, covering some of the other surfaces. So I'm gonna just gather up my, my papers here. Okay, well, let's start with these pieces. Excuse me. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do is cut out a piece that's going to be roughly the right size to cover these. Um, and there.
calling for a little bit of extra. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of butt these up next to each other. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna spread some matte medium all over the place on these and get them ready to accept that tissue paper. work quick and it's okay in this instance to work a little sloppy have some fun messy days are fun all right so I'm gonna just continue to kind of butt those up side by side I'm gonna take this and just uh, lay it over and it's gonna go down the way it goes down I like a little bit of wrinkle in it. I think that texture is a nice addition. I want to make sure that all of the edges are nice and adhered to the paper. That looks pretty good. cut it apart at this time. You could have cut, you know, them separately. You could have done this in pieces like the master board. Um, you know, do it any way you want. I did it the way I did it because uh, it seemed like a good idea. Seemed like a good way to get both of these covered with a minimum amount of waste um, and bother. So that's why I did it the way I did it. Um, but it could have been a disaster. I think it worked out pretty well. So I'm just making sure all of this is nice and laid down on all of the edges. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my brayer and just, now I can do that with this tissue because this is a pretty hefty tissue. If you've got very delicate tissue, I would not do this step, but it seems to just be, I don't know, like I, I maybe got the matte medium a little too dry in some areas. It wasn't as juicy as it should have been. So um, I just wanna make sure that I'm getting this nice and laid down. So, well, I think I've got it pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is actually put a layer now over the top of this.
even over these edges that uh, that didn't get stuck down. Why not? There we go. All right, that one's ready to be set to the side to dry now. And let's focus on this one. This one's down pretty good, but let's get some edges taken care of on this one. I think this one adhered better because it, um, it was the unfinished uh, side of the paper, so it was more porous. I don't know, but it seems to have worked. It seems to have adhered a little bit better on this one than the other one, so. But we're gonna let this one, this one dry as well. That looks pretty cool though with that, um, I can't see it as well on the olive green, but you can see it really well on this brown. So I'm gonna set that one to the side now. And let's try it on this piece. So I think we can cut this about right here. So hindsight, I'm going to make sure that this gets nice and covered, nice and juicy with that matte medium. The other thing you could do is use Mod Podge, you could use PVA glue, um, you know, really whatever you want to do the adhering um, and the finishing off, whatever you have on hand. I like matte medium because of that matte finish that it gives. So, so what this is gonna do is going to allow those doodles to come through. It's gonna allow that color to come through, but it's gonna just tamp it down and put another design element over the top. So that looks pretty cool. Definitely neat. I like that one. That's not your everyday piece of paper, is it? It's gonna be fun. All right, let's see how our master board's doing. It's not fully dry, but it's pretty darn dry. And I think it's dry enough that we can put our our tissue over it here. So let's you could do this with napkin. You could do this with sewing pattern paper. You could do this um, just with regular paper towels or napkins, maybe, if you, you know, peel them apart. Okay, that was, that was possibly more than what I needed. I'm going to use this brayer to spread this <laughs> since my brush is on the small side. Make sure it gets to all the edges. And again, it's okay if we're messy because we've got our messy mat out. This messy mat of mine is simply a Walmart flannel backed vinyl picnic tablecloth. It's meant to be somewhat disposable, but it's the heavier duty kind. Um, 
but I just, you know, wipe it up and keep it. That's a, that's a secret that I have from my daycare days when I was working in daycare centers and doing art projects with toddlers. Um, I would take this out and we would do our messy stuff on our messy mat and then I could just, you know, wipe it off or let it dry on there and it didn't matter because we weren't damaging the table or anything. So there was still quite a bit of uh, matte medium left on that brayer, which is a sufficient top coat for this. So, um, I could use my heat gun to dry this, but I think what I would end up with is kind of a wrinkled mess and um, I would like this to be flat. So, I'm going to let these dry and we will come back later. Okay, so I am back and uh, the other items are still drying, but I've had an opportunity, uh, had an opportunity to make an additional master board off camera and that is also drying. And so I thought, what else do I need um, to make? I'm kind of running low on and I like using this mixed media paper. This is from Canson. It's the Canson XL. Canson XL mixed media, multimedia, whatever um, paper. It's in the blue, uh, blue tablet with a big XL on the front. <clears throat> I use this as kind of like a base paper. It's a nice weight uh, to use both as pages as well as pockets. Maybe not quite as quite thick enough to use as tags and cards, but if you back it with another piece of paper, it's great. Um, but what I need, I'm running low on kind of coffee dyed uh, paper like this, so I thought I don't need a. It's not it's not nice here anymore, so I can't do a big batch of coffee dyed paper um, or dyed paper uh, outside. So I need to do it at my desk. So. You can see a lot of videos about how people do like the big batches of coffee dyed paper. So I thought well, what I would do is is just show you guys quickly how I how I do dyed paper at my and at my table in small batches. So I'm gonna take these large sheets. These are I think like 11 by 17 or something something crazy like that. And I'm gonna cut these into something that's just a little bit more manageable. And I leave the little craggly ends on because once these get dyed, they make great little collage pieces for embellishments and whatnot. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, do this and start one piece at a time is fine. And the first thing I will do is I have a spray bottle of water always at my desk. I'm gonna spray this down with some water. I'm gonna do that on both sides and get it nice and nice and soupy. And also at my desk, I've got a spray bottle of coffee. And I'm gonna go ahead and get some coffee on there and make that nice and soupy and I'm gonna let it get fun and bubbly and you know crazy and then I'm gonna take my heat gun and I'm gonna dry it okay so and because there's still splatters and stuff on here, every time I flip the paper to dry the other side, um, it gets it gets some more little bits and bobs on it, which are, are making interesting markings on the paper. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. All right. So I flipped the paper back and forth a couple of different times to catch more of the drips and the drops um, until I've pretty much got most of the coffee soaked up. There's still a couple little wet spots on this, but this is pretty much completely dry, ready to go, minimal amount of curling, no muss, no fuss, great piece of coffee dyed paper. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this again 
we'll do one more coffee dyed one and then we'll uh, take out some colors. So again, I'm gonna just take some water and get that all on the one side and all on the other side and start getting that paper, those paper fibers to open up. And we're gonna get some coffee on this one. Make sure it gets all over. And we're gonna put some coffee on this one. And again, making sure it gets all over. You can do some fun stuff like that. So let's give this one a dry. All right, we've got a second one done. Now let's try some colors. I'm gonna leave this coffee on my work surface because I tend to work in a grungier style. And so I don't mind if my colors get a little grungy with coffee. Um, it doesn't bother me at all. So wet down my paper. I'm gonna take out some of my color sprays here. see I've got pink I've got orange I've got green I've got blue and that's what I've got okay so uh, I use green a lot so I'm gonna get this shaken up this these sprays are made with water and gouache paint and the reason I use gouache instead of watercolor is that gouache once it is dry will stay where it's at even if it gets wet again so I'm going to spritz this down. Get that wiped around, flip it over. Get this one spritzed down. And get this one down. Okay, so you see where this one um, sat in the coffee, this side sat in the coffee um, mixture a little bit longer that was on the mat. We've got some browns working through the green in here and I really like that effect. So there's another one that's ready. Okay, so for the last sheet of paper, let's do kind of a multiple color just for, just for funsies. So again, not paying too much attention to the fact that there's already color down on the mat. It's fine. Um, probably not going to use a whole lot of green because there's already green down on the mat. So this orange is fairly strong and the pink is fairly strong. So let's start with some blue maybe. Isn't that fun? All right, let's dry this one. Actually, let's kind of let these just there we go. Let's get those to do some funs, funs for a bit. Okay, I am gonna wipe this down because I'm, I just really like how this one turned out. Um, I don't want it corrupted. Or at least I want to minimize it. So I'm just going to take a baby wipe and wipe down my my mat before I flip this. Um, all right, so I'm going to re-wet this side. Let that get wet again. And let's do the same thing on this side. So put some blue. Some pink. 
ink. And some orange, and this already has some green and coffee on it from when it was down on the mat, so. All right, so there's that one. So managed to keep my other side pretty well intact on that one. So what if you're saying, hey, Erin, um, great idea. I kind of like what you're doing with that multicolor there, but I don't really like the way that it gets muddy when the colors mix. Well, I have a technique for you. Um, you what you could try doing is get another little piece of paper to work with here. What you could try doing is one color at a time dry um, so let's try that and see what that does so I'm getting again both sides of the paper wet because that'll help minimize the curling and it'll help open up all the paper fibers so let's start out with the orange this time Whoop. this one tends to kind of spray the furthest so we'll get like a couple of rings of orange going on this and I'm gonna dry this in place. Okay, so we've got our orange pretty well dried into place now. I'm gonna grab my pink. Um, because the paper is pretty well dry, um, and if you want a really nice soft effect, take and spray some more water. If you want more of that spritzy effect where you can see the spray marks, then you can just keep the paper, um, you don't have to respray the water in between. So I'm gonna do that this time and let those spritzies show of the pink this time. And you'll see now how the pink, it's layering with the orange, but it's not mixing with the orange. So let's dry this into place. Okay, so that's pretty well dry. So you'll see how those spray marks um, on that one are still visible because I didn't spray water. So for this, um, this time, let me spray some water down. I'm gonna wipe that around. Notice that color isn't lifting. Um, and now I'm gonna spray some blue. So that blue is gonna be a much softer effect now because I use the water. Um, and it's going to, again, layer with the pink and the orange, but it's not going to mix with the pink and the orange. So what we should get is not muddy colors. Um, they should stay fairly vibrant, but it'll still mute it a bit, so. So as you can see in this one, um, let me grab the other. Obviously I used a lot more colors here, but in, in this first example, you see how we had some color mixing. You get some muddy, muted colors. I like that because I work crunchy. But if you want the colors to stay truer to what they are, then use this technique where you dry in between the colors and then they'll stay you know, truer to what they are. So let's try um, the other side here. try the blue first this time. I'm just going to kind of play with the texture a little bit. All right, the blue's dry. Let's put some orange on there. These are the two colors that tend to make the muddiest, um, the muddiest color. So let's layer that orange on there pretty good and see what happens. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of this or let some of that blue be true, true blue. <laughs> wow, that turned out really nice. So let's get some pink on here and See what happens. All right, so that is pretty well dry. So there you have it. Um, that is my technique for, um, you know, dyeing small batches of paper at my desk or at my at my studio table. Um, yeah, small batches. So let me know what you think of that, and if you think you're gonna give that a whirl. 
I enjoy it. I kind of like doing the small batches. It feels more artistic to me. Um, I, I like some of the effects that I can get. Um, I learn how to control my materials a little bit better. So, you know, there's, there's many advantages to this and I'm not taking up my whole studio or my whole yard um, trying to dry papers. <laughs> so anyway. Okay, so these are now mostly dry. I would say they're probably like 90% of the way dry. So we can take a, a good look at them. So I've done some trimming. Um, so here's the one uh, ones that were on the hanging file folder. Um, something interesting happened because I just, again, I'm not sure if it was because I didn't get enough matte medium on there. I mean, it's all adhered, but you can see that some some areas are darker than others and it gave us kind of a streaky finish. I don't mind it. I think it's pretty cool. It just adds another layer of texture um, and interest to it, but you may decide that that's not for you. So if that's, um, if that's the case and you're working with a heavier weight tissue paper like I was, um, you might, you want to make sure that you've got it nice and wet um, with the glue on there to make sure that it all, you know, goes dark. So, but those are, those are pretty cool. Um, here is the one that went on to the mixed media paper that I had already watercolored and done the doodles on. This turned out great. Um, I really, I really like how this turned out. I'm not sure which journal this is going to go into yet. Um, I'm not sure I have one planned, but it'll, it'll go into something. Maybe, maybe Meadow or, um, Northwoods I have coming up. So those are some options there. This was the craggly end that came off of that piece of paper. So we've got that, uh, the watercolor, we've got a little bit of doodle. We've got the craggly end showing through this tissue paper. So I'm going to go really crazy and take this to my sewing machine and sew up the side and make a cool, um, page edging or a base for some clusters or something like that. So that's what I'm going to do with that piece. Here is the one that was made on the master board. And I think this one is definitely my favorite just because it is the most cohesive look. It's the most vintagey. It's the most interesting to me because of all the book page that's showing through. So I, I definitely just love the way that this turned out. And what I think I'm gonna do with this one, I have a celestial journal coming up. So these gold colors are gonna go really, really great with what I have planned for that. So I am going to use these pieces in the Celestial Journal, which is I think the one I'm going to be working on next, to make some flips and pockets and stuff for that journal. So that is what I will do. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make some specialty papers of your own um, using basic supplies in your own studio. And if you liked this video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you're checking out all of the other channels that are part of this collaboration. Just as a reminder, let me go back to my page here so I have my notes. As a reminder, those channels are Denise Cothern, Above All Journal, Bets and Pieces Studio, Millennial Scribbles, The Crafty Cottage. Excellent, excellent videos um, as part of this collaboration. Go give those channels some of our e-papery love. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff, and we will see you next time. Bye.